Hey guys, welcome to my Persona Top 10. At number 10, Dragon Ball Z. At number 9, 9. Alright, that's all you get. Did SMT9? SMT9. <laughs> yeah, looks like I sort of missed the date on that one. Well, it's the thought that counts, right? So if you didn't know, Persona's 24th anniversary was last weekend. And well, I sort of forgot about it, but I still wanted to pay the series, albeit a little late, homage through this video. How I'm going to be doing that is by bringing up one of the most dividing conversations you can have about the series. But yeah, without further ado, let's get into my top 5 Persona rankings. Yeah, so number 5 on my ranking of all the Persona games is Persona 4. I... Just really, I'm not a fan of this. How the story is structured, just, it's like you wait months and months and months for the same story beats. I am not a fan of it. Plus, a lot of the game's characters aren't great. I am not a fan of Chie or Yosuke or Yukiko. I mean, Yukiko's the better of all of them. Uh, she has more of an arc, although she sort of flip-flops between what she wants, like, way too much. And at the end, you know, she's all like, Oh, I saw a Dachi by the first person to be murdered, and I didn't bring it up until now. Isn't that so helpful? It just doesn't really make sense to me, man. It doesn't work. Um, but yeah, Chie, really just not a character without Yukiko being real. It's like, she likes fighting people, eating meat, and then like, training, and that one movie that Yosuke broke. And Yukiko, that's, that's, that's the character right there. Just summed it up perfectly. And Yosuke, I mean, he's cool and all, but he just kind of exists to make you feel good. He didn't really ever feel like he was his own person. <laughs> that being said, though, there are some good characters in the game I really like. Uh, Kanji and Naoto. Although, <laughs> the fandom seems to like them for all the wrong reasons. Uh, yeah. So, the gameplay of it I thought was very enjoyable. I really liked the challenge of it, and it didn't feel as artificial as... Maybe Persona 3 or something. Uh, the whole tactic system. Yeah, I'm one of those people who says it's bad. I, I personally am not a fan of it. But yeah, I really do want to praise Persona 4, though, for how it does social links. Because I think it's just got some of the best social links in the game. Dojima and Nanako, best social links. Or Dojima, at least, is probably my favorite social link in all of Persona. It's really good. Alright, now I want to talk about Persona 1. Now, a lot of people put Persona 1 as their least favorite, but honestly, for me, I really enjoy the gameplay. I think the dungeons are great, and quite frankly, way better than the dungeon scene in Persona 4 and Persona 3. They're really fun to go through. The OST is great, both the uh, PSX and uh, PSB version. I really like the first person dungeon crawling. I'm just a fan of it, what can I say? I also really like sort of the um, setting, like the map, um, and I think that some of the symbolism and uh, story's messages are actually conveyed pretty well for a game that was made in 1996 or whatever. I find the game to be really enjoyable. I like that there's two routes. The characters are okay. I will say that, like, they don't ever really seem... Like, it, in all the plot points and stuff like that, it's like they're going somewhere, right? But they don't exactly finish going where they were going. It, it, do, it doesn't feel complete always, but I will say what's there, I really do enjoy. So, yeah, now getting on to my third favorite. Yeah, I think that's how you say rankings. Yeah, so my third favorite Persona game is Persona 3. I really like a lot of parts about this game. And honestly, I think it's only so high because of uh, the uh, sort of, I guess you could say the nostalgia factor. Though I've only been playing these games for like about two years, so it's like nothing. But this one will always have a special place in my heart. Looking back on it though and replaying it, the game's writing is really not that great. It's a lot of exposition dumps, and really the exposition dumps are like structured in the worst way possible. Ooh. The story events just pop up out of nowhere like twice a month. It doesn't feel coherent at all. It doesn't feel like it has flow. It just feels like something that the writers had to do. They didn't really implement it as well with the day-to-day -day social link life. You know? 
Uh, that being said, though, I think the tone of the game gets so good in the last month. Like, that... It's phenomenal when you see the whole, like, town sort of is losing it, basically. Another thing is that the Dungeon Tartarus. I think the game pulls off Tartarus as well as it could have, but in concept, having one dungeon that's randomly generated, that's like 250 floors, is just not a great idea. There's, It's just not as enjoyable as... You know, hand-built dungeons like in Persona 1 or Persona 5 or Persona 2. You know, they're all great. Alright, now moving on to my second favorite Persona game. Now, this one is Persona 5. And honestly, I feel like I have a lot of bias towards this game because it was my first Persona game. And I sort of think of it more highly than it probably should. I really love the gameplay of it. I... <laughs> It's just fun. It's fun to play. It's nice. It's uh, relaxing. <laughs> and it is a lot easier than the others, but I, for how I play the game, I kind of like that, you know? Um, and a lot of the story beats really kind of miss for me, and some of the characters I just find annoying. And I mean, I know this is a rich coming from the guy who's played thousands of hours of Atlas games. But some of the characters seem a bit too anime sometimes, you know, film. Uh, sorry, what was that? I mean, I meant, you know. Uh, yeah, not a fan of some of the characters, and I really don't like how after their introduction arc, the characters don't really contribute much to the story, other than just being there, saying like a jokey line, basically just telling you that they still exist, but not with anything really meaningful to say, you know. And a lot of the characters go back on what their arcs are, like on... <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah, that was not handled very well. But yeah, nothing to me, even like the gripes about the writing and stuff like that, nothing will change for me the feeling of just logging back on, hearing beneath the mask, and just ready to dump mass amounts of hours into the peaceful setting of LeBlanc. It's so nice. It's cozy, man. What can I say? Alright, now moving on to the number one spot, yep, it's Persona 2. Honestly, the game's gameplay of both Innocent Sin and Eternal Punishment is either way too easy or a little bit hard, but I don't really think it was that bad, it was just kind of slow moving. I really enjoyed the game, what can I say? The story is great, the dungeons are very fun, the characters are developed and they never drop out of the story. They always feel like they're there. I mean, I know this is really cringe. I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it. They feel close to real people. Not that I know what that means, though. But, yeah, I think the characters are really great. I mean, just look at them. What can I say, man? They're great. But, yeah. Additionally, with that, I think the game is... A perfectly great length it's only it only took me about 30 hours for innocent sin a little bit longer for eternal punishment but most of that was just grinding and I just think it really works I like how the protagonists have good character development I really like Tatsuya and Maya they're great um, just the like opening animations are also really sick and I really like the different sort of direction they took with the visuals of this game so a lot of it is, you know, like, very, uh, pixelated and, well, not very graphically intense. It's similar to Persona 1. But they, the characters all have these, like, goofy expressions, and I don't know, I, I just thought it was funny. Another thing, speaking of goofy and wacky stuff, the plot is insane. It goes everywhere, and yet still manages to have some of the most grounded and relatable characters in the Persona series. I just find it really cool. And I like that the game is sort of split up into two games. I don't know. I, I just think it's it, it's cool. It's neat. What can I say? I said what can I say like way too much. Yeah. Probably should cut that out. But yeah, that about wraps it up for this. Um. Yeah. I should probably stop playing this many anime games. And happy 24th anniversary, Persona. Woohoo! Let's go. Also, I got a very big video that I'm working on. Like I don't know if it's very big. It's going to take a while to edit, let me just say that. 
So yeah, stay tuned for that, and thanks for watching. See you. Persona 5.